There's 104 days of self-isolation. Outdoor school has come along to save us. We'll still social distance, but with entertainment, there's so much for us to do now. Like maybe doing critter catch with fossil and bumble, or cleaning up your messy room. Different experiments with potato, or wilderness first day with trillium. Learning things with fruit about animals or measuring stuff with marmot. Fascinating. Learning to plant with lich. Plant facts with morning glory and obviously camp songs too. This rocks. As you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff to do. Outdoor school is so much fun. Come on, Boulder. Go stick with us. It's the Creekside staff. The Creekside staff are making a title sequence. Hey there, everybody. I'm Squiddy Sue, but you can call me Squid. Today, I'm going to teach you a couple things about plants around your neighborhood and also how to make really pretty art with those plants, such as this. Let's get started. Here we have a beautiful dogwood tree that's blooming in the spring sunshine. And I have gotten myself a specimen right here so that I can have an actual branch that the bird that I'm going to be making is standing on, and it'll go like this. Here we have a really, really pretty tulip, and I can tell that it's a tulip because of the structure and way that the petals are formed around the plant. I can also tell because of the texture of the stalk and the leaves as well. They're a little sticky and smooth. You can also tell if you look in and look in there so you can also tell from the center of the flower what kind it might be and as you can see there's only one here and even though it's beautiful and would make a lovely addition to whatever art we'd be making the flower is the reproductive part of any plant so if we pick the only single one there's not going to be any next year so we're going to leave this one here and hopefully find something else like it along the way just like flowers can range in many beautiful colors so can leaves and leaves tend to be sturdier and last quite a bit longer after they've been plucked from the from the plant. So we can get a couple of these really, really pretty yellow and green leaves as well. Think of the feathers of a bird. These could make some really, really good bird feathers. The pieces that you use for your art can also be a bit harder. Here we have a Douglas fir cone. And you can tell that it's from a Douglas fir because of the little rat tails that are poking out underneath all of the individual pieces. This will be fun for later. You can dissect it and take the pieces off and then glue them on separately to get some really cool effects. Here we've got a couple succulents growing out of this stone wall. Succulents can grow out of cool places like that, similar to the mosses that you can see here. Fun fact about succulents, if you were to pluck just a single one of these uh, leaves from them, and then plant it into some soil and water it, you could grow a whole new plant off of just one piece. If we take a moment to look at these little tiny blue flowers, some with yellow and some with white centers, some with little purple bits around the edges, these are called forget-me-nots, and they are the Alaska State flower. All right, so here I found a treasure trove of different flowers. First one I'm going to talk about is the dandelion. The dandelion is typically called a weed. It's also one of the first flowers that shows up in spring and is very important for pollinators like bees. So please let these grow in your yard. Dandelions open up as a flower so that they can be fertilized by pollinators such as those bees. They'll close up and then they'll open up like this. This is how they spread their seeds. They have this beautiful fluffy cluster here and they catch in the wind. So you can spread seeds of these flowers while also making a lovely wish. All right, next we've got here is this lovely little patch of daisies. Another very common spring flower, one of the first to show up. One thing you might not have known about daisies though is that they are part of a group called composite flowers. And composite flowers are made up of two different kinds of flowers on the actual flower part. The first is called a ray flower, which is the petal. So these petals are actually all individual flowers in themselves. And in the center, if you ever look at a daisy up close in the center, you'll notice there's a bunch of little tiny flowers and those are called disc flowers. So each little yellow dot that you see there is its own flower as well. Now I'm standing next to two invasive species. One we've got here is the English holly. And then down here growing up, up it is the English ivy. These came from England and they were brought over on the ships when people came from England to the Americas 
because both of these plants were considered beautiful garden plants and people wanted to have them when they had their new homes. And what happens when you introduce a new species to a new environment is they don't have any natural predators. So when they were brought over, they spread like crazy because there is nothing that naturally hunted them. All right, so I'm looking on the ground here for some really cool pieces to build my nest. And I have actually found a couple alder cones, which allows me to tell me that this is an alder tree. I personally know a lot more about cones than I know about trees. But if you look close, alder cones are very similar to pine cones, except all of it is squished down to be really, really tiny, which is different than our sequoia cone. This one is still small, but the pieces individually are still large, whereas this one just looks like a whole pine cone was shrunk down. There are some other plants that you should definitely not touch no matter what. Right here we have one of them. It's stinging nettle. And you can tell because if you look closely at the stalks, they have little tiny stingers. And there's also some along the bottom of other leaves. It might be a little difficult to see, but you can see the overall leaf shape and then now you know what to look for. Do not touch these for it's very painful. Also, no, keep in the over general rule, leave the three, let them be, because that could be poison oak or poison ivy. An important thing to keep in mind when you are collecting pieces for your artwork later We've got this small sapling here. You can tell it's a young plant because it's only got one cluster of leaves near the top and the rest is just the stem. Don't take leaves or flowers for that matter from saplings or small plants like this because it's still learning to grow and the leaves are how it makes its food. And if you pick the leaves, it's not go it, it will die because it can't make food. <laughs> right here, we've got a Japanese maple tree. It's one of many kinds of maple trees that live in the area. And as you can see, it's got a really, really pretty red color. So we're going to use that to add a splash of color into our artwork. All right, so we have all of our pieces, which I like to organize typically by color and by type. So we have all of our flowers over here, leaves here, and harder things like pine cones over here. Then I also think it's a good idea to have another medium, whether it be Sharpies, like I've got markers, pencils, whatever you prefer, crayons, have some sorts of adhesives. I like using hot glue more than anything else, but I've also got some super glue and scotch tape. You could also use glue sticks or Elmer's glue as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I know that in general I want to have a bird that's standing on this branch. So I'm going to put the branch where I think it would be good to have room for the bird. And before I glue anything on officially, I'm going to trace it. So I have the overall shape right there, and then I'm going to make just a general sketch of what I want it to look like in the end before I glue anything on. And if you mess up in your sketch, that's okay because nothing is on there anyways and you're going to cover it up anyways. So here I've got my general sketch. It's nothing major, not a whole lot of detail because most of the detail is going to be in the additions I'm going to make. So now I can get started with where I trace, and I'll start with that piece since that was uh, the one that started my sketch, and then I'll, I will continue from there. One important thing to think about as you are making your art is layering, because think of this, it's always easy to put stuff on top of other things, but it's really hard to put things underneath things that you've already put on. So for instance, I've done the Japanese maple leaves as the tail feathers, and it goes over the wing, but that's okay because later when I put the wing on, the petals are going to go over it. Similarly, how I'm going to layer the stomach uh, feathers at the moment is I'm going to take these little pieces of that cone we collected earlier and I will glue them on in a fashion like this where you start from the bottom and then you're going to add the layers that go on top afterwards like this. Then after that you'll be able to add the petals or leaves that are going to make the bird's wing that go over these things it's important to work, think about what's going to be in front and most present, and then go behind that and work from there first. All right. So as you see, I've now glued these on in the way that I showed you on how to layer them, and it makes it look like a natural bird's feather patterns, similar to how flowers form also. So now I'm going to show you what I was talking about earlier, is I've got these really pretty tulip petals that are going to be the majority of the wing. So I'm going to glue it on top of the other one and it'll look like the bird's feather that goes, the wing, goes over the tail. 
then I'll continue. I start at the end of the wing so that I can do the same layering process to that. So I put that back there. And then do a similar thing where it comes over the stomach feathers. Like that. You continue that until you run out of these petals typically, and then you move to slightly smaller petals to layer over that because the way that they fall is in many layers. And then you can end up with something like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned a couple things, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Squid out. Now I hear outdoor school, so cool. And super glad you made it here, here to learn about science and nature. And make a few friends out here. When you're on field study, getting good and muddy, holding belts and earning your beads, Jericho. If you don't think outdoor school's going to be so cool, I'm here to tell you outdoor school's going to change you. Just show up, just come out, make your student leaders proud. Grab your boots, grab your coats, fill your water up, go before you go.